Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time of your truth. As your word is being opened into our hearts, being poured by the Holy Ghost, I declare burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed. If there is any sick person listening and watching to me, watching me right now, I command that sickness to leave their body now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now we are in 1 Corinthians and we are still in chapter 6. Now yesterday, I stopped in verse 10. Now he is telling you, you who are doing the wrong stuff to your fellow believers, he says, remember something there are the kind of people that will not inherit the kingdom of god listen 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 this is not talking about whether there is grace or there is no grace there is a certain character that will not inherit now when he says inherit the kingdom of god you need to understand something he is not just talking about going to heaven see inheriting the kingdom of god is not just about going to heaven we already have begun to inherit the kingdom of God. See? We are. See? You know, some people just think, we are just here waiting to get to heaven. We are just here waiting to get to heaven. We are already living the heavenly life here now. Praise God. We are. What do you think the Holy Spirit... I told you something. See, Jesus is not going to come. Oh, Jesus is not going to come until we get qualified to sit on that same seat that Jesus is sitting. What do I mean by that? What's happening now? We are being matured. We are being, the Holy Ghost is working in us, building us up into Christ Jesus himself. See, now, now as that is taking place, what's going on? We are increasing. Our mentality is increasing. We are increasing. We are being changed. We are being transformed. Where our minds are being changed into his mind. See? Until our judgment with his judgment becomes the same. That's what Jesus prayed in John chapter 17. He says that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. That we may be made perfect in them. So, so Jesus is looking for the day. That when I speak, you know you've heard the voice of Jesus constantly. Not, not, oh, when I pray hard and I'm now full of the Holy Spirit, then I start prophesying. No, we are looking for the day. He, he is waiting for the day that I'll just be speaking normally. You know, we're just talking and then, and then we're speaking the word of God. Because our minds and his mind have become one. Now, until that happens, forget it. Now, that's what I mean that we are already inheriting the kingdom of God. There are some of us who are already living the life. So when we when we eventually get to heaven, because there is a heaven, so don't let anybody deceive you. There is a heaven. So how do you know there is a heaven? Oh, there are some people living there already. It's a physical place where people are living. You see, uh, how do you get there? When we die, you don't get there by dying. <laughs> Praise God. You know, nobody gets to heaven by dying. That's the funny thing. No one gets to heaven by dying. So what about people who have died? Are they not in heaven? All the great preachers, all the great... Nobody gets to heaven through death. The reason is simple. Death is an enemy of God. So the enemy of God cannot be the gateway to his house. <laughs> Think about it. No, no one. I told you this before. Anyone who is dead has been held captive by the spirit of death. So it doesn't mean death is punishing them or they are in hell. No, it doesn't mean they are in hell. They are just being held captive until the day that God is going to command death, give up. And death is going to give them up. And that's what we call the rapture, the dead in Christ rising first at the rapture. So God is waiting for us to develop ourselves in authority. Now when we get to that place of authority, where death truly have no power over us, then God is going to command the spirit of death 
my children have overcome you. Give up the ones who are holding you. So they are there waiting for us. I want you to believe with me that we are the generation that is going to free everyone that have died. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we have some people who are in heaven. Jesus, for example, is in heaven. So where do you think Jesus is? Somewhere he's in heaven. And how did he go to heaven? He ascended. The disciples saw him go up. Praise God. Elijah is in heaven. Enoch is in heaven. Moses is in heaven. And guess what? There are saints who had died. You know, when Jesus died and rose from the dead, uh, from the Korean, died on the cross and rose from the you know, something miraculous happened. The Bible said the dead, all the saints that had died before, rose with him. They came out of their graves. So what do you think happened? think they died again? No, they went to heaven with him. See? Praise God. So, so we've got many people living in heaven already. And that's why you know that God is going to give us an opportunity to have that taste. Now, what, what are they doing in heaven? They are waiting for us. They are waiting for us. They are waiting for us. I can't imagine Abraham there. You know, say, how do you know Abraham? Abraham is in heaven. But he died. Oh, he rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, Abraham rose from the dead also. It's in the book of Matthew. Chapter 27. Praise God. So he, he, he's there. You know, and then, then he's just looking at us and, and he's praying. He said, let this be the generation. Let this be the generation. Because they are waiting for us. They want to come on earth to rule. Praise God. Ah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where are we? Mm. So he says, all these characters, they will not inherit the kingdom. So if you still think that eh, is, is the most important thing is that I'm born again. Once I'm born again, I'm born again. Hey, if you find these characters in you, you're in trouble. You, you need to repent. You need to change. You need to let the word of God walk in you. And know that true and true, the spirit of Christ is walking in your life. Praise God. So he says, no such thing. I want to take time to look at this one after the other and ask yourself, am I like this? All right. Verse 11, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. He said, and such were some of you, but ye, were, ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He says, such were some of you. He says, such were all of you. He says, such were, 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 but something happened to you. You were washed. You were justified. Now, having been washed and justified, what do you do? You stay justified. Praise God. Now that's the spirit of the Christ living in us. It keeps us justified. We don't go back to iniquity. We don't go back to those things we used to do before. No. Why? The spirit of Christ and grace is at work in us. So the thing that used to hold me bound and captive before, I look at it and I smile. Say I'm free from it. Praise God. Never to be tempted by it. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. We don't live, we are not scared of sin. No, we are not. We take a decision that it's not our way of life. We take a decision that we won't do it. And we have the authority, we have the power in us to say so. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 13 says, meat for the belly and belly for meat, but God shall both destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. That is just that your body is not for fornication. Your body is for the use of the Lord. Hallelujah. Think about it. So that's why he told us in Romans, he said we should offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. So you, you say, Lord, I want to use my body, my whole being. Just use my whole being. You know how God uses your whole being? He manifests divine health in your being, in your body. If any organ in your body is giving problem, Lord, I just yield my whole body. That's why I say it's not for fornication. It's not for any wrongdoing. It's not for that purpose. When you use it for that purpose, then it will get injured. But when God uses your body, think about it. He will only bless you. 
renew you and strengthen you. And guess what? You don't get old. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. All right. Mm. Verse 14. And God had both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them a member of an harlot? God forbid. This is who you are. <laughs> you know, it's not just about, oh, I couldn't handle the urge to do to commit fornication or I couldn't just handle it. Hey, think about it. You take the, bo the body you yielded to the Lord and you go make it a member with what? With a harlot. So you say, you know this, this is the body of God. You just, I, I give it to you, harlot. Use it. Think about it. <laughs> you, you, you see how disgusting it is. All right. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two said he shall be one flesh. Wonderful. Did you see that? I see you begin to have certain challenges in your life because of what you have joined yourself unto. Now then. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. In verse 18 it says, Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his body. Follow me now. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let God take glory over my body. Let God take glory over my spirit. They are God's. No, what I do in my body is, is the spirit is not affected. Uh -huh. The spirit lives in the body. If your house is dead, you are dead. It's as simple as that. If someone comes into your house and he sees death everywhere, he says, no, you know, it is the house that is dead. Says, but me, I'm very clean. No? I'm very clean. Who's going to believe you? If you are clean, then you are going to manifest that cleanness or cleanliness in your environment. But if you are dirty, of course your environment is going to be dirty. So the state in which you live truly tells the state of your spirit. If your spirit is really godly, if your spirit is really godly, then your environment will be clean. Everyone will be safe around you. Everyone, you, you, you live an in, a, in an environment where no, everyone will know that this one will not steal from you. Oh, this one is not going to, it's not going to cheat. This one is not going to rape our daughters. This one is not going to, you, 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 it's just there. Yeah. Why? Because your spirit is clean. You know, sometimes we try to walk it from the outside in. It doesn't work that way. See, if you clean the house, for the, you go to someone's house, oh, your house is too dirty, and then you clean the house and clean everywhere. You say, ah, I've cleaned your house, so don't let it get dirty again. If he's dirty, trust me, he's going to finish eating and throw the plates over there. He is going to throw his shirt in one other, in one corner, and, and then he's going to, the next day he's going to add the next shirt. He's going to, until you come back some days later and say, what, is this not the house that I cleaned? Not the problem. The person is dead. So when your spirit have not been changed, when your spirit have not been transformed, you will keep doing dirty things. It's as simple as that. There are no two ways. It's not, I know, I'm, I know uh, God loves me, but it's just that God loves you, yes, but you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, there are people God will love till the end. He loves them. It doesn't know that he hates them. But he will still tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But all this while we were with you, he didn't drive us away. Yes, it has come to the point where we have to separate the sheep from the goats. Yet he's God of all flesh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take note of these things. And let the Spirit of God help and guide you. 
Have a wonderful day today. Bye.